In this video, we are going to talk about wall processing. With many discoveries of early man, anthropologists believe the use of wool came out of the challenge to survive. In seeking means of protection and warmth, humans in the Neolithic age wore animal pelts as clothing. Finding the pelts not only warm and comfortable but also durable, they soon began to develop the basic processes and primitive tools for making wool. By 4000 BC, Babylonians were wearing clothing of crudely woven fabric. The major steps necessary to process wool from the sheep to the fabric are shearing, cleaning and scouring, grading and sorting, carding, spinning, weaving, and finishing. The first step in processing wool takes place on the farm or ranch with shearing, usually in the springtime. A skillful shearer, using electric hand clippers similar to enlarged barber's shears, uses long smooth strokes close to the skin in order to preserve the length of the fiber and hence the value of the fleece. The quality of fleeces is determined by a technique known as wool classing, whereby a qualified person, called a wool classer, groups wools of similar grading together to maximize the return for the farmer or sheep owner. Shearing sheep is not a cruel practice for domestic sheep and breeds that don't shed their woolen coats naturally. Without it, untamed wool leads to serious health issues. However, subjecting the sheep to unnecessary cruelty during the farming and shearing process is common. Next come the buyers. Many times they take coarse samples of wool in order to measure fiber in length and diameter. Fine and medium fine wools of longer staple lengths, more than 3 inches, usually go to make lightweight worsted suit and dress fabrics. Coarser and shorter fibers, less than 3 inches long, usually go into bulky sweater and carpet yarns. Sheep are usually sheared once per year, usually before lambing or in the spring before the onset of warm weather. Sheep with long fleeces are sometimes sheared twice a year. Feeder lambs are sometimes sheared to make them more comfortable during the summer. Shearing prior to lambing results in a cleaner environment for baby lambs. It also keeps the fleeces cleaner. Freshly shorn sheep need protection from the elements. It takes up to six weeks for the fleece to regrow sufficiently to provide effective insulation. Sheared sheep also require more feed to maintain their body temperatures, especially during the winter. Sheep should not be sheared in the winter if protection, usually housing, is not available. A professional shearer can shear a sheep in less than two minutes. The world record is 37.9 seconds. The record was set in 2016 by Ivan Scott from Ireland. Scott set another record, shearing 867 lambs in just nine hours. The blade shearing record was set over 100 years ago, when legendary shearer Jackie Howe sheared 321 sheep in 7 hours and 40 minutes. After shearing, the wool is delivered to the factory after grading and breaking up of the fleece based on overall quality. In sorting, the wool is broken up into sections of different quality fibers, from different parts of the body. Next the wool is scoured. Wool taken directly from the sheep is called raw or grease wool. It contains sand, dirt, grease, and dried sweat, called suint. The weight of contaminants accounts for about 30 to 70 percent of the after being carded. The wool fibers are spun into yarn. To remove these contaminants, the wool is scoured in a series of alkaline baths containing water, soap, and soda ash or a similar alkali. The byproducts from this process, such as lanolin, are saved and used in a variety of household products. Rollers in the scouring machines squeeze excess water from the fleece, but the fleece is not allowed to dry completely. Following this process, the wool is often treated with oil to give it increased manageability. While some of the characteristics of wool can be altered through genetic engineering of sheep, most of the modifications of design are implemented during the manufacturing of the fabric. Wool can be blended with any number of natural or synthetic fibers, and various finishes and treatments can also be applied. Clean wools from several different batches or lots are often blended mixed mechanically at this stage. Blending unifies the slightly different basic colors of raw wool, and also helps to standardize staple length and diameter for uniform quality. Each wool fiber absorbs dyes so deeply, that dyeing at any processing stage is equally effective and durable. The best quality of wool comes from the shoulders and sides of the sheep, and is used for clothing. The lesser quality comes from the lower legs, and is used to make rugs. In wool grading, high quality does not always mean high durability. The finest Australian and New Zealand merino wools are known as 1PP which is the industry benchmark of excellence for merino wool 16.9 microns and finer. This style represents the top level of fineness, character, color, and style as determined on the basis of a series of parameters, in accordance with the original dictates of British wool as applied by the Australian Wool Exchange, OEX, Council. Only a few dozen of the millions of bales auctioned every year can be classified and marked 1 pp. The next process is carding. The carding process passes the clean and dry wool through a system of wire rollers to straighten the fibers. The fibers are passed through a series of metal teeth that straighten and blend them into slivers. Carding also removes residual dirt and other matter left in the fibers. 
Carded wool intended for worsted yarn is put through gilling and combing, two procedures that remove short fibers and place the longer fibers parallel to each other. From there, the sleeker slivers are compacted and thinned through a process called drawing. Carded wool to be used for woolen yarn is sent directly for spinning. Carding, sometimes called of combing wool, is a necessary step in the process of making wool cloth. Carding makes sure all the wool fibers are untangled and aligned in one direction, making it easier to spin smoothly. In short, carding is a mechanical process that disentangles, cleans and intermixes fibers to produce a continuous web or sliver suitable for subsequent processing. This is achieved by passing the fibers between differentially moving surfaces covered with card clothing, a firm flexible material embedded with metal pins. It breaks up locks and unorganized clumps of fiber, and then aligns the individual fibers to be parallel with each other. In preparing wool fiber for spinning, carding is the step that comes after teasing. The word is derived from the Latin cardus meaning thistle or teasel, as dried vegetable teasels were first used to comb the raw wool, before technological advances led to the use of machines. Carding machines are known as cards. Fiber may be carded by hand for hand spinning. Science historian Joseph Needham ascribes the invention of bow instruments used in textile technology to India. The earliest evidence for using bow instruments for carding comes from India in the 2nd century. In 1748, Louis Paul of Birmingham, England, invented two hand-driven carding machines. The first used a coat of wires on a flat table moved by foot pedals. This failed. The invention was later developed and improved by Richard Arkwright and Samuel Crompton. Next is plying and winding. It is the spinning process for yarn formation, which makes it ready for weaving or knitting. After spools of roving are in place on the spinning frame, the ends of the roving are drawn through small rollers to extend the wool fibers still further. Then the spinning machines twist and retwist the roving into yarns of a wide variety of qualities including strength, firmness, size, and ply. Winders are used heavily in textile manufacturing, especially in preparation to weaving where the yarn is wound onto a bobbin, and then used in a shuttle. Ball winders are commonly used by knitters and occasionally spinners. The warp is the set of yarns or other things stretched in place on a loom, before the weft is introduced during the weaving process. It is regarded as the longitudinal set in a finished fabric with two or more sets of elements. The term is also used for a set of yarns established before the interworking of weft yarns by some other method, such as finger manipulation, yielding wrapped or twined structures. Very simple looms use a spiral warp, in which the warp is made up of a single, very long yarn wound in a spiral pattern around a pair of sticks or beams. Next is weaving. The wool yarn is woven into fabric. Wool manufacturers use two basic weaves. The plain weave and the twill. Wool yarns are made into fabric using a plain weave, rarely a twill, which produces a fabric of a somewhat looser weave in the soft surface, due to napping, with little or no luster. The napping often conceals flaws in construction. Worsted yarns can create fine fabrics with exquisite patterns using a twill weave. The result is a more tightly woven smooth fabric. Better constructed, worsteds are more durable than woolens and therefore more costly. Knitting machines are just as versatile. Their mechanical needles are just as accurate and many times faster than hand knitting. After weaving, both worsteds and woolens undergo a series of finishing procedures including fling, immersing the fabric in water to make the fibers interlock, crabbing, permanently setting the interlock, decating, shrink-proofing, and, occasionally, dyeing. Although wool fibers can be dyed before the carding process, dyeing can also be done after the wool has been woven into fabric. Most of the quality control in the production of wool fabrics is done by sight, feel, and measurement.